We have uh, Alex Tudor here, former Surrey, Essex, yep. and England bowler. Was there another county in there? No, 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 just the two. Sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm not the Stan Collymore cricket, nope. <laughs> Leave that to Dom. And a quick one, what are you doing now, Alex? Uh, work at Kim Bolton School. Uh, I would say cricket, but I'm mainly an all-rounder now, so I do uh, hockey, uh, football. Uh, so I thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, coaching kids is what I do and what I enjoy, so I've been doing that for the last eight years. Do you like football? Yeah, love no, 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 love football. Chelsea fan, are you? No, let's no. get it right. QPR. QPR. Yeah, QPR. Right. Yeah. We're not doing so well. Yeah, no, no. Right. Okay. What do you make of England's performance in India then in this series? Listen, this England team under Ben um, is one that you want to watch. Sometimes you might not always agree with the way that they go about things, but this is the positive intent that he wants to show. And I always said, from when he did his first interview, which I think was with Jonathan Agnew, and John asked him like, you know, win, lose, draw, and Ben Strayway went draw. I don't do draws. He says, we're here to entertain. Um, and they have been. And it, I don't think there's been a, a series or a game where, especially when England are batting, you do not want to watch because you just, anything can happen. Sometimes, as I said, you might not agree with the shot selection or the over positive, especially if a bowl is in, a, in good rhythm, but it's entertaining nevertheless. It makes people have to think, even though at the moment it's 3-1 to India. Even the India people, I think Sanjay Bandraker at the end of the series was like thanking Ben for his positivity. He had Rohit Sharma having to think on the spot because they've never seen it before. Um, and they just trust the process. And, and to be able to be in a change room like that and have that as an individual is all you ask as a sport person is that you get the backing of the coach and the captain and they have that in spades. You know, I, I remember the first game where, you know, young Tom Hartley was bowling and he was going for plenty. But he ended up bowling a nine over spell or whatever is in my time you know stewie nasa whoever was the captain would have whipped him off and you might not have seen him again in that innings um so that just shows you how the game has moved forward ben as a captain you know baz mccullum as a as a leader just positivity you, you know got ben duckett coming out going oh well chase 600 well we know that's nonsense but that's the belief that they have and if you have that belief then all of a sudden you're going to have some of the results that you see when they chase down big totals or bowl people out for cheap. I'm seeing some parallels with your old skipper at the Oval, Hollyoaks, in the style of leadership. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I, I mentioned that I was fortunate to do the, the fourth test on, on uh, radio, on Talksport, and um, I said there's massive similarities with the way that Adam was with the Surrey change room at that time. The respect he had, just being ultra positive would never ask anyone to do anything that he's not willing to do himself. Ben encompassed all of that. And, I, you know, I just feel like I would have loved to play under him as well and under Bez Brendan McCullum. They just have that positivity. And to have that backing as an individual going in there, not thinking, well, if I don't get any runs, I'm not going to play. If I bowl bad, I'm not going to play. They back you. They pick you because they see something in you and you just want to go out there and express yourself. That's what this England team do. And at the time, Surrey were the best side in the country. They were known as the Manchester United of cricket. <laughs> yeah. Somebody yesterday I was interviewing called them the Manchester City of cricket now. Wow, OK. I know. <laughs> I mean, you had some amazing times with um, him and Keith Medlicott, who's here at Reed School. You yeah. had him as your manager and, and you won the championship and, mm. and seven one-day trophies, I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, listen, I was, I was very blessed and lucky with the personnel that I had within that change room. There was a lot of experience. And I remember Alan Hansen's famous thing, you don't win nothing with kids. But we had a, a massive blend of experienced pros, Thorpe, Stewart, Bicknell, Bicknell, Butcher, Brown. And then you had myself, Ben Hollyoak, uh, James Ormond and stuff like that. So you had some young guys as well that can learn off those senior players. And it was a good blend. Keith Medlicott, as I said, he'd just come from coaching in Northern Transvaal in Pretoria, doing extremely well. Came back as a, you know, obviously he was a Surrey player, came back as coach. And uh, we had a really successful time, very enjoyable. As you say, people called us the man you, I suppose, at the time in that era, because obviously Fergie, so Alex Ferguson was, uh, was manager. And we were very dominant. And, you, you know, you used to see teams come to the Oval and sort of fear us a little bit. So the boundary riders will be out before the first session um, because they didn't want us to get away from, you know, get away from, from the session. So they used to try and temper our flow with putting fielders out there so that was always an experience but I think we went three and a half years unbeaten at home um, during that period which was enjoyable to be a part of that side the success the memories the stories is why we play sport
Um, I miss it. I don't miss the training. I don't miss how my body feels after a day's play. But what I miss is the, the, the friendships, the relationships that I've made over a course of a, a career and that we still have them and the stories that we hear. That's the one thing I miss is the change. Lovely. Surrey won the title in 99, 2000, just missed out in 2001. Yeah, we did. Three in a row. Surrey now are going for three in a row. Do, mm. do you know why you missed out? You... I'm, try I'm trying to think. We went back to back. I don't know if there was a loss of injury or what used to happen is England used to take half of our team. But we always had people like Nadeem Shahid, Jason Ratcliffe, people that would come in and do extremely well. Uh, being back end of the season, I would have been injured, no doubt. Uh, so that might have been a thing. I, I don't know. I don't think it was just because of me, but there would have, we would have had injuries with Nash. Is, um, so I was, I was playing, Alec was playing, Ramps was playing, Butcher was playing. So, you know, it was just four, was, so that's five. So that's five you're taking from the team straight away. It's hard, but this, this Surrey team are doing extremely well. I mean, you know, people talk about, you know, they have the finance and resources, but you have a pool of players that are not really going to get taken. Then you, you throw in Kemar Roach, and Dan Worrell, who's been fantastic coming from Australia, um, when you have good professionals on um, pros or overseas pros like we had with Sakhalay Mushtaq, then obviously that breeds success. Last question. Do you, did you, do you wish that you were an England player now, under this era, with central contracts and things like that? People always ask me if, would I like to play now? I think I would have liked to definitely have played under Ben, ben and Brendan McCullum, just with the way I was. And, having that back and just go out there and express yourself. Um, I think I prefer my time, uh, the people that played and that, and especially the players that played against, you know, Pakistan, you had Wazim, Wakar, all these players. And you know, Australia had that gun team, arguably the best team ever to walk the earth. And that would always be debatable against the fantastic West Indies team of the 70s, 80s. I think Shane Moore would have been the difference, but that's just my opinion. Um, but I think I preferred my time. Um, even though that the, the finances and, and everything else is a lot better now, I think we have better memories, even though they've got more success than, than we had and they're obviously millionaires. Um, I, I preferred our time. We didn't have social media. We could go out. We didn't have to be stuck in a hotel room playing Xbox and all that type of thing. We didn't even know what that was. I mean, Xbox well, it was like Spectrum or Commodore back then. Um, but I think we just enjoyed, we were able to play hard off the pitch, hard on the pitch and hard off it but we were still able to go out and perform, so that's last, what I thought. Last question, it doesn't keep you up at go night on. when you were hit by Bradley. Doesn't keep me up at night, but it's funny, my, my, my children, my son now, um, watches it on YouTube and laughs um, and finds it quite funny. But I said, look, son, uh, you know, he was arguably one of the quickest bowlers ever to play the game. He bowled most probably the quickest bowl that a lot of us have ever seen. Um, I said, I always remember Treskovic, who for me was most probably uh, one of the better players that I played with of our generation. He literally gloved one down leg side, ran off the pitch. It was, he was bowling that quick. Fremantle doctor at Perth. Um, and I always remember, as I was getting carried off on the stretcher, he had bowled a, a beamer to Steve Harmison next ball. Because all I remember as I was going up the stairs, a ring of booze mainly from the Barmy Army. And I was like, what happened? He's just bowled a beamer to Steve Harmison. I said, I guarantee next ball, Harmy will not be in front of this ball. He was on square legs, toes, clean, bold, game over. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a story to tell. The one thing I do have though, is that I think Brett Lee in an interview or somewhere that I seen had said that I was scared. I can tell you now, never scared, never. I think the only time I was scared and Andrew Flintoff will tell you this was when I was playing um, under 11s. They had a guy called Bradshaw. He was like six foot two when we was 11. He bowled with heat. The only time when I was worried about um, fast bowling. Trust me, you were the quickest bowler I ever faced, but I was not scared, just to get that right.